another day, another dollar. It's hardly. I thought we had sunshine today. I think another rain system is moving through. But the bees are flying, so we're making the best of it. We're just going through to do a little bit of housekeeping. So it's not really critical. As long as the bees are flying and they'll move when we smoke them out of the way. Look at this. It's working my way, cleaning up this colony. Look at the brood. Isn't that beautiful? Seeing brood from the frame tops. Look at that. You don't even need to pull those frames. I was chatting with Ray Olivares actually over text today and he was just mentioning to me uh, what we're experiencing here is probably to do with the same damn system that's given them all the cold shitty type weather throughout their spring and he said the word of the day is patience those little small ones that you're looking at those you know four to five framers just hanging on and he's saying now that they've seen pollen and they have nice weather coming through and they have flowers everywhere he says they can't manage the amount of bees because of just the explosion within the colonies he said they're having queen production unlike any other year just mating and growth and brilliance just that complete turnaround right so he said just be patient Keep them fed. Keep on top of your work. Just keep at it. And let things follow through.
I received a lot of engagement from that last video I posted, particularly in regards to having to buy in some replacement stock to help boost or bump my numbers. I find this type of engagement addictive, really. And the feedback I get from beekeepers maybe is one of the reasons why I continue to do this video project is I'm trying to tap the answers just like every other beekeeper out there. There's a little bit of disappointment in regards to me making the decision to buy in some package replacement stock. And I think the, uh, damn thing. Yeah. And I think the tone is more so that they don't feel that my actions right now are reflective and what I've been all about for the last, well, doing this video project for the last five years. Like I'm a beekeeper that preaches sustainability, sustainable development. And on one hand, that's exactly what you've been seeing over the last little while is that sustainable development. But my belief, and this goes straight to the core of absolutely everything that we do on this farm, is that sustainable development goes past just those internal dynamics. It goes towards managing risk, safety net programs, protecting our business from failure, from the, un the unknown, like the unknown being all this bloody snow. Like how am I supposed to manage those dynamics, all those uncertainties? How do I manage those uncertainties at the desk as I'm pushing that pencil, just trying to reinforce the bottom line? So you do that with a whole range of tools, right? So you focus on internal development and you maximize your profits, but then you have to offset the risk, right? With safety net programs. Safety net programs, just providing the ability to tap into capital, to tap into cash, when you fall into hardship. And then as livestock producer, you also have to, especially the beekeeping industry where our livestock dies on us. Like my brother said at the meeting the other day, as I'm kind of battling with the decision to bring in packages, he said, you can't produce honey though with bees. You have to reinforce the bottom line, which is bees in these boxes. Otherwise, you don't have a business. I don't think I have my varroa mite uh, infection under control. I think I'm also suffering with a little bit of fungal gut disease. My bees are away and being tested right now. I'm just seeing what my viral loads are. But I don't think I have a good handle on the health of my colonies. I have a, it's just an intense focus on nutrition right now to help manage that issue because what other options do we have? So I'm trying to keep my bees alive by keeping them healthy and it's working it's working because i only have a 20 percent loss and i have bees to be able to work with right so i'm good i'm in a good spot i could probably carry on but at the fact of the matter is it's not good enough and if i don't do something to bump up my colony numbers to fill in the dead spots maybe help um bridge myself back into how I typically manage, you know, with nukes and such, I leave myself vulnerable and I can't allow that. And if I have another delay, let's say, let's say May, it's starting to come in nice and sunny and warm. So says the weatherman. But what if uh, from a week from now, we fall into another winter type cycle, cold and depressing. I'll lose 30% of my bees just like that. And I can't allow, I can't just sit on my ass and not recognize that as a risk to my business. Because middle of May, it's too late to build a source. Uh, let's say the availability of packages. The availability of replacement stock is one of our industry's uh, biggest problems. And I'll, add to that affordable replacement stock. We can't be taking on this tremendous amount of debt as we just try to maintain our numbers.
It's not sustainable. It's not feasible. So, any rate, that's just, you know, these, these are the business dynamics that I'm trying to battle with as I'm going through the operations. And now we're the second consecutive cold spring. I don't, typically in our farm for the last 25 years I've been farming, we've had our wheat sown before May 1st. And like the video I sh was shown yesterday, there's some of our property still has snow on the land and flooded. We're not going to be going until middle of May again. So these are just the, the unknowns, the uncertainties, those dynamics that we have to deal with. So we have to make tough decisions and we have to go out of our comfort zone sometimes just to be able to manage operations to protect ourselves to make sure we keep in business until the following year. Nothing easy about this business. I never say it is. Nobody says it is either. It's just a dynamic and sometimes we need to swallow our pride.